Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please, let's open our Bibles to the book of Psalm of David. 107. Psalm 107. Psalm of David. 107. I read verse uh, 20. Or let me say verse, let's start from verse, tw- from verse 17 to get a better understanding of the uh, context. The book of Psalm 107, I start from verse 17. It says, Some were fools through their sinful ways, and because of their iniquities suffered affliction. They loathed any kind of food, and they drew near to the gates of death. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. Verse 20. He sent out his word, and he healed them, and delivered them from their destruction. Praise the Lord. I read that verse 20 again. He sent out his word, and healed them. He sent out his word and what? Healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Hallelujah. Primarily, God sends his word. God works through his word. Hallelujah. In the beginning, in the book of Genesis, we see God actively working in creation. The Bible said darkness was over the face of the deep. The earth was without form and void. Amen. And the spirit of God moved or hovered over the face of the water. And God said, God said. So God said, let there be light. And there was light. So everything that we see in creation today came by what? Word. The word of God. So all things were made by the word. So God primarily works through the agency of his word. Hallelujah. So God wants to do anything, he will do it through the agency of his word. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we must pay attention to God's word. Amen. So when God wants to do something in your life, he will send his word to you. He will give you his word. It is that word that you need to hold on to. It is that word you need to believe. When you receive that word, then you will receive the power of that word to birth what the word has spoken. Amen. When God wants to change the life of Abraham, how did he do it? He gave him his word. Amen. The Bible says Abraham believed God. What does it mean to believe God? He believed the word of God. Amen. The word that God spoke to him. The gospel which God preached to him concerning Christ. So whatever God wants to do, he does through the power or the agency of his word. Look at the book of Psalm. Psalm 33. Psalm 33. Verse 1. Psalm 33. So God wants to heal you. He sends his word. So he sent his word and he healed them. So God uses his word to carry out healing. In the book of Psalm 33, look at verse 9. For he spoke, and it came to be. He commanded, and he stood firm. Did you see that? For he spoke, and it came to be. He commanded, and he stood firm. So God carries out his works on earth among men through the agency of his word. And the word of God has power to carry out the purpose of God, to accomplish the purposes of God. If you look at the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 55, Isaiah 55, Isaiah 55, I read from verse 10. And we focus on verse 11, but we start from verse 10. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower 
and bread to the eater. Verse 11, so shall my word be that goes out of my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, that it, it will not return unto me a failure, but it shall accomplish that which I propose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. Praise the Lord. So, whatever God wants to accomplish in your life, God will give you a word. Hello? Hello? That is why a, a man of God that I respect very much, Pastor Chris Oyakilome, he said, what God wants to give you is not a job. What God wants to give you is not a car. What God wants to give you is not money. But what God wants to give you is what? The word in your spirit. It will make you what he talks about. So there is power in the word of God to produce God's purpose in your life. He sent his word and he healed them. What they, what they cried to God was for healing. What they cried to God for was for deliverance. But how did God carry it out? By sending his word. Hallelujah. He sent his word. And one thing is this. Listen very well. God will send his word through a man. Amen. Amen. Through an agent. So I want you to know that when God speaks through his servants into your life, believe it. Amen. Amen. It is when you believe it that you see it become a reality in your life. Glory to God. Amen. Ultimately, God has sent his word. Jesus Christ. The word that became flesh. You remember? The word became flesh. So Jesus Christ himself, God's message to us is the word of God. Hallelujah. He is the embodiment of God's purpose, God's intent, God's message, God's thought towards man. Hallelujah. The expression of his love, the expression of his power, the expression of his grace, the expression of his compassion. Christ Jesus, the Lord. Amen. Amen. And he came and he healed people. In fact, when Jesus Christ came and he healed people, he healed people and cast out demons by the power of his word. Look at the book of Matthew. Matthew. Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8, verse 16. Matthew chapter 8, verse 16. The Bible says, that evening, they brought to him many who were oppressed by demons. And he cast out the spirits with what? Are you there? With what? With a word. And healed all who were sick. So how did he, what instrument did he use in casting out the demons? A word. He spoke his word. Hallelujah. He spoke his word. He released the word. He released the word. So the word is God's instrument of miracle, of healing, of deliverance. Amen. So we must focus our mind, our faith on what God speaks. Our faith should not be in material media. That is objects. Hello? Our faith should be on what God speaks through his servants or what we read in the scripture. The word to us. That should be the basis of our faith for healing and for miracle. Amen. We should not be like, uh, <clears throat> like what I showed us last week. You know, the woman of Shunem. The servant of God has spoken his word, sent his word in the form of the rod. He said, oh, but the woman said, no, it's you. He had the leg of the man of God, man of God, you must go with me. You see, she did not believe the word. She believed in the physical presence of the man of God. And that's why the rod failed to raise a son. Until the man of God actually went there. Praise the Lord. The woman that had the issue of blood. She said, if I could touch the hem of his garment. That was a good faith. Jesus said, your faith has made you whole. Hallelujah. 
But Jesus did not even commend her like that. Uh, Jairus said, come and lay your hand. Well, that was an expression of faith. Praise the Lord. But a man, the centurion said, Master, just speak a word and my servant shall be well. Praise the Lord. He said, Lord, just speak a word and my servant shall be healed. And what did Jesus say? Jesus said, ah! <laughs> verily, verily, I say to you, truly, truly, I say to you, I have not found so great faith. No, not even in Israel. Hallelujah. So that is the faith that Jesus commended. Jesus clapped for him. Faith that is built solely on his word. On his what? Word. The word he spoke. Say, Master, just speak the word. Hallelujah. Amen. And last week I showed you a man. Uh, the, the, the noble. The nobleman whose son was sick at home, far away in Capernaum. And Jesus was in Cana, in Galilee. And Jesus said, hey, you people, until you see, you know they believe. You must see something. You must hold something. You must start something. Okay, go home. Your son is healed. Hallelujah. And was the son not healed? The son was healed at the hour, the seventh hour, which was 1 p.m., that Jesus released the word. The son was far away. Eight hours walk away. Yet the word reached him the moment Jesus spoke it. Hallelujah. God wants us to have, to have faith in his word. When God speaks to you, believe his word. When his word comes to you, believe it. Whether you are reading the Bible and you read in the scripture how about your healing and the word, it, word comes alive to you, you see it. The Holy Spirit quickens the word to you. Believe it. That has the word. Hold on to it that you are healed, that you are blessed, that your provision is made. Believe it. Glory to God. I say glory to God. I say glory to God. I believe in the power of the word of God. Whether it's provision, once, you, once, once God speaks, it's done. Just believe. Because when you believe, then you see the glory of God. Amen. Don't wait until you see some material medium. Now, does it mean that God cannot use material things like oil or water or mantle or handkerchief? Does it mean God cannot use it to heal or to work miracles? Of course, God can work through such things. Amen. Amen. Yeah, as a servant of God, praise on them. Praise the Lord. Amen. But God does not want us to put our faith in those objects, in those materials. In those substances. He wants our faith to be in his word. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Now I want us to look at something. Um, in the book of Acts of the Apostles. Acts of the Apostles. Chapter 19. Acts of the Apostles chapter 19. I want us to look at verse 11. Acts of the Apostles chapter 19. Verse 11 to verse 12. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 19, verse 11 and 12. It says, and God was doing extraordinary miracles. The King James Version says special miracles. Some other translations say unusual miracles. By the hands of Paul. What makes it unusual? What makes it extraordinary? What makes it special? This is it, verse 12. So that even handkerchiefs or aprons that attached his skin were carried away to the sick and their diseases left them and the evil spirits came out of them. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That means as Paul was working, don't forget Paul was a tent maker. As he was working, he was sweating. And uh, some people will come and take handkerchief and say, Master, my mother is sick at home. She's tormented. Ah, what can I do? I'm busy now. I cannot come. Okay. Paul will say, uh, he, he will take his handkerchief or the apron he's using to wipe his face, wipe his face and say, ah. Then somebody will say, ah, well, if you cannot come, let me take this, your apron and go and lay it on mama. 
And that's their faith. They believe. And they, they, Paul will say, well, if you believe, all things are possible to him that believe. The woman, was it Jesus that gave them the, uh, the, the, that gave the woman the garment to touch? It was her own faith. So it was the people themselves who believed that if they took apron or handkerchief eh, from the body of Paul to their sick, they will be healed. It was their faith. Hallelujah. And just as God honored the faith of the woman with the issue of blood, God honored their faith. But the Bible calls it something. That's what I want us to take note. The Bible says, the Bible described it as what? Extraordinary. The Greek word there carry, carries a lot of import for us. It, it carries a lot of a message for us. It will help us to understand what God did there. The word there, actually the, the right word, the right translation will be unusual. Something that is not the usual thing. Unusual. It's not the usual thing. It's not the, the common way God works. God did it as a special ministration in response to the faith of people. The usual thing is God speaking his word through the mouth of his servant and people will be healed. Praise the Lord. That's the usual thing. When Peter, in the book of Acts of the Apostles, you can put your hand there, don't close it, but let's go to Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8. Oh, sorry, chapter 9, rather. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9. Look at verse 33. Or let's start from verse 32. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9, from verse 32. It says, Now as Peter went here and there, among them all, that is among the brethren, he came down also to the saints who lived in Lydia. There he found a man, a man named Aeneas, bedridden for eight years, who was paralyzed. Verse 34, and Peter said to him, Peter said to him, Peter said to him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ heals you. Rise and make your bed. And immediately he arose. So you can see there that how did Peter minister healing to that man? By what? Speaking. The word. The word. The word. He spoke. He said, rise up! Jesus Christ makes you well. Hallelujah. And he rose up. There is power in the word of God. There is what? Power. So healing power is loaded in the word of God. Once it is released, it's not left for you to what? To receive it. Look at the same book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 14. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 14. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 14. We start from verse 8. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 14, from verse 8 to verse 10. Now, at Lystra, there was a man sitting who could not use his feet. He was crippled from birth and had never walked. Verse 8, verse 9. He listened, take note of that. He listened to Paul speaking. And Paul, looking intently at him, and seeing that he had faith, that he's perceiving that he had faith to be made well, said in a loud voice, he said, that is Paul said, Paul released the word, stand upright on your feet. And he sprang up and began walking. So you see that miracles normally took place or happened how? by the word. So that is the usual thing. People receive healing by the spoken word. When words are spoken over their lives. Amen. Amen. Jesus said to blind Bartimaeus, receive your sight. To the, to the leper, I will be thou clean. And he was clean. Is that not how? He spoke to dead Lazarus. What did he say? Come out. So by his word. But in the case of Paul the Apostle, in this Acts of the Apostles chapter 19, it was quite unusual. It was extraordinary. It was special. Because it did not involve the word. 
So God acted like that because of the people there. The people there, the Ephesians, because this is a city of Ephesus. These Ephesians were, have been given to idolatry. This is where the ancient uh, uh, idol or goddess called Artemis or Diana. The Roman people call it Diana. Uh, the, the Ephesians themselves call it Artemis. They are used to that to idol worship. So, and people that are used to idol worship are people that are used to what? Material medium. They are used to it. So for you to communicate faith to them, the power of God to them, you have to go in the way of material medium. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But God wants every believer to grow beyond that. Amen. He wants you to grow beyond that. And that's why you are being taught the word of God. So that when there is no material medium, you will not die. You understand what I mean by that? Some people are used to it. They are so, their faith is so much in it. In, do you know that some people's faith is in uh, uh, oil? And their faith is so much in oil that it is Goya oil. You know what I mean? Goya. That bottle. If you give them another brand, <laughs> their faith will not attach to it. Give them another bottle. They will say this was not... I me, mean, I've seen somebody come, he came to, she came to a chemical shop to come and buy it. She said, I, I, give me anointing oil. You see, in chemical shop, anointing oil. <laughs> give me anointing oil. She put, they, you know, when you go to those uh, chemical shops, there are different bottles, different brands. She won the anointing oil. And which was the anointing oil? Goya. Uh, is it, uh, what do you call uh, Goya? Is it Goya? Uh, what do they call that? Uh, Bodies. Bodies go here. Bodies go here. So that is it. The bodies oil. Amen. That is what they want. That yellow one. The one with the yellow label. That's it. If you give that another one, you have heard, you know, it's not, it's, that one is not anointing oil. That one is not anointing oil. It must be that one. Oh, it must be bodies. You understand? Aha. Uh -huh. You see, they have, their faith has become attached to material. Are you following me? So don't be like that. Because when people's faith is in uh, materials, handkerchief, mantle, oil, water, salt, honey, stone, stick, and all those other kind of things. See, it will be very easy for Satan to manipulate you and to lead you into idolatry. Amen. And don't forget, Faith in material object is not a strong faith. It is faith in the word of God that is the real thing. Don't forget the one that Jesus praised is the one that said, Master, just speak the word. Those ones that say, come and touch. Uh, let me hold your garment. Let me. Jesus did not commend those ones. He commend the one that said, Master, just speak the word and my servant shall be made well. Praise the Lord. You see, when you put your faith when, when you have this, uh, you are used to material medium for healing, for miracle, then you might fall into idolatry if you are not careful. I'll show you an example. Do you remember that God worked a special miracle in the wilderness for the children of Israel? How snakes were biting and killing them. And God said to Moses, make a brazen, a brazen serpent eh? and put it on a pole. Whoever looks at the, the serpent will not die, but will live. Do you remember that story? You know that Jesus Christ, our Lord, also, he mentioned it. That story happened actually in the book of Numbers chapter 21. Amen. It happened in chapter 21, Numbers chapter 21. Now, and that's reading from verse uh, 4 down to verse 9. Amen. Now, and Jesus mentioned it in John chapter 3. Verse 14, he said, if, as, even as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so shall the Son of Man be lifted up. That whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have what? Everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Now, Moses lifted up the rod in the wilderness. It was not the real thing. It was a shadow. A, 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 
an object to teach faith to them. Are you following me? But you know the problem. Because that bronze, a bronze, a bronze serpent what healing? So miracle. Ah, snake bites you. They say, look, you look. The, the poison of the snake is neutralized. You know, chop anything. You know, drink anything. Eh? You just look. Eh? It tap and bite you 20 times. You just look. You know, they die. Ah. So after they left that place, Moses said, oh yeah, Major, let's go. As they were going, Moses did not carry the, the bronze serpent. To, he left it there. It's an object in lesson. Just to teach. It's just a, a, a lesson aid, a teaching aid to teach them faith. But you know something? Some of them, because their faith has been attached to material medium, they, they, they look here, they look here, they look here, they look there. They carry the thing. They carry the, the serpent. Ah, put inside their under their cloth. And, oh yeah, let's go. We are marching to Canaan. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful Canaan. We are marching. Huh? Hmm. <laughs> this rock, this serpent, <laughs> we perform miracle like this. <laughs> huh? Moses will not carry it. We must carry it. Though. Who knows? We snake bite us another time. We must have something to... <laughs> hmm? So they carry the, the bronze serpent. With them. God never told them to carry it, but they carried it. Because their faith had become attached to that thing. And did you know, they began to worship that thing. Satan deceived them. Demons deceived them. When Moses made it, they were not burning incense to it before it worked. No incense. They just looked. But after they carried it, and they began to... Use it on their own. Eh? They needed to burn incense. They needed to offer sacrifice. Burn incense to that idol. I mean, to that bronze serpent. It has become an idol now. The evil spirit, demon, have already become attached to the thing. You understand? Because they believe in it. So they thought it was the power of God. Now, the same power that worked when Moses lifted it. Uh, are you following me? They thought it's the same power. Do you know that as they were burning incense to it, they were receiving healing, no? Oh, they were receiving healing. Oh, they were receiving healing. People that were beaten by snake, the, the man would say, come, I have something special. <laughs> Did you know this thing? Did you, he would tell them the testimony in the wilderness. I have that snake here. I have it here. I just need to do, just pay small money. You have to pay, of course you have to pay. And then you buy some incense. You burn the incense. Then you do. And they will do all the ritual. And the person will be healed. Ah! So this one will tell that one. This one will tell that one. That's how he became an idol. The children of Israel, oh, they were worshipping that thing for a long time. In the days of Samuel the prophet, they worshipped. In the days of David the king, they worshipped it. In the day of Solomon, they worshipped it secretly. They worship oh, many, many years until the days of King Ezekiah. For oh, almost over a thousand years since Moses made it, they were worship that same bronze serpent. They kept it and were worshiping it. Go to the book of Second Kings, chapter eighteen. Second Kings, chapter eighteen. Second Kings, chapter eighteen. So King Ezekiah came to power. And uh, he discovered it. So among the idols that the children of Israel were worshipping in their idolatry was this bronze serpent. And do you know why this bronze serpent survived for so long? Did you know that there were many, many revivals, many, many revivals that took place in the land of Israel? Many idols were destroyed. But this one survived. Do you know why he survived? I could imagine. Because there was, a, there was history behind it. Oh! Do you know that this bronze serpent was made by our great patriarch Moses? The great prophet Moses made it. He was the one that made it. 
It did not just work. It, it was by instruction. I'm sure that those people who were in charge of the bronze serpent, they will even open the book of Numbers, chapter 21, and say, see, it's in the, it's in the book. It's in the book. God, so this thing is not, it's not ordinary. It's God that instructed our father Moses to, to produce it. So, and he's still working. So, people could read in the scripture that is there in the scripture. So, that thing made it to, to escape. So, people did not see it as what? Abomination. They didn't see it as idol. They thought they were practicing faith. But thank God for a man called Ezekiah. King Ezekiah came and he destroyed it. Look at Ezekiel, Second Kings chapter eighteen, verse. Uh, let's start from verse um, three. You know we can't go into much of the story. Let's just start from verse three. We know we are talking about King Ezekiah, and Ezekiah did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, according to all that David his father had done. Verse four. He removed the high places and broke the pillars and cut down the Asherah. Those are idols. And he broke in pieces the bronze serpent that Moses had made. You see, they still had it in, in line that Moses made it. For until those days, the people of Israel had made offerings to eat. They made offerings. They burned incense. They made offering, gave money, made offering in different form. They even kill animals, offer their blood, burned incense to that brown serpent. Did Moses do that? But now demons have entered into the matter. Hallelujah. But they were still rejoicing and holding on to it because. It was Moses who made it. And because it had history that it worked in those days. So they still held on to it as it was in the beginning. So it is. So it will be. That's what they were saying. Eh? Our fathers used it. And it worked for them. So it must work for us too. Praise the Lord. It was called what? Nehushtan. What's the meaning of Nehushtan? Nehushtan means the bronze thing, the copper thing, the bronze thing, the bronze thing. That means it was Ezekiah, the king, who called it Nehushta. When they said, when I believe when they told him and said, ah, this thing, ah, is a special thing, no? Ezekiah, the king said, Nehushta. Nehushta means that copper thing, ordinary copper. And he broke it to pieces. He smashed it. Do you know what some people will say that day? Hey! Hey! Abomination. This man? Hmm. 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 The work of our father. The, hmm. You destroy the handwork of our father. The thing that God instructed Moses himself to make, you just destroy like that? Hmm. Praise the Lord. Do you see? How things like that can enter people's minds. And people now become totally, completely absorbed into idolatry by the use of what? Material media. Are you following? Some people have made oil an idol. You will, when you see when when they come when they come and they don't see bottle of oil on the table of the pastor or at the altar on the near the pulpit, there's no bottles of oil. Ah, they can't. Their faith will not work. Hallelujah! Do you know some men of God, even men of God, men of God, they themselves have become total. Their faith have become so weak that until they see oil, oil touch their hand like this, they cannot minister healing. So men of God will say, please, do you have oil? Do you have oil? Do you have oil? Anointing oil. Give me anointing oil. They have to rub anointing oil in their hand before they can lay hand and minister healing. They can't minister healing until they rub oil in their hand and start touching. They, so their faith is in oil. So if there's no anointing oil, they will not minister, healing, uh, minister that day. You must get oil for them. Praise the Lord. 
So we must not put our faith in those things. Our faith must be in the word of God. Praise the Lord. The fact that God used uh, that anointing oil to minister to you today and you receive it doesn't mean you should not make it, uh, 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 you know, and, uh, uh, something that is, should, should be the usual thing. It's an unusual thing. Praise the Lord. God working miracle through aprons and handkerchief is not the usual way. The usual is an unusual miracle. Praise the Lord. And God doesn't want you to build your faith in handkerchief, aprons, and those things. He wants your faith to be in his word. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. It doesn't matter where you are. All you need to do is hear the word. Faith comes by hearing the word. Power is in the word of God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So when the word of God says you are healed, believe you are healed. Because his word is spirit and life. He said, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and what? They are life. The word of God communicates healing. It communicates power. It communicates anointing. It communicates everything. In fact, the handkerchief can do nothing without the power of the word of God. The oil can do nothing without the word being released. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. So you don't idolize all those things. Don't idolize them. Don't let Satan deceive you. Now you now make them hide on. Praise the Lord. You now begin to worship those things. Some people, they, are, they mantle. Hmm? Has become an idol. Oh. They, that handkerchief, they, what they call a mantle. It has become an idol to them. You see, they will tie it on their neck. You see, they will tie it on their car. They will tie everywhere. Mantle, oh, mantle, oh, mantle, oh, mantle, oh, mantle. Oh. Ah, ah. If their mantle get lost, they will be, see, they, 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 they will lose their balance. They will lose their balance. If they want to go and minister healing to the sick and they don't see their mantle ever, they, they will not have faith to minister healing to the sick by laying on of hand and speaking the word. They, are, they must have mantle. Are you following me? God doesn't want you to be like that. He wants you to have faith in his word. He wants you to have faith in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. He wants you to have faith in the power of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 I have ministered to people with oil. I have ministered to people with water. I have ministered to people even with handkerchief. I have ministered to people. But that's not the best of God. The best of God is you hear his word and receive your healing. Receive your miracle. He sent his word and he healed them. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. So whatever God wants to do in your life, he will do it by the power of his word. All you need to do is what? Believe. Believe. If you believe, then you see the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I say glory to God. Hallelujah. When God says you are healed, you are healed. Because that word itself is life. Is what? Life. It's healing. You are healed. You are healed. Healing enters you. When God says you are blessed, blessing enters you. I'll show you something in the scripture so that you understand what I mean by what I mean by that. Look at the book of Ezekiel, chapter 2. Ezekiel, prophet Ezekiel chapter 2. Ezekiel chapter 2. Ezekiel, after the book of Lamentation, you will see after the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah, then Lamentation. After Lamentation, then you see Ezekiel. Before you get to the book of Daniel. Ezekiel chapter 2. Now, if you want to understand what happened in chapter 2, because we are reading verse 1 to verse 2. But let's, let's start from uh, the last verse of chapter 1, which is verse 28. It says, like the appearance of the bow that is in the cloud on the day of rain, so was the appearance of the brightness all around. Such was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. And when I saw it, I fell on my face, and I heard the voice of one speaking. I fell on my face. That means he fell down. He fell down. He was so weak. He fell down. Now, verse chapter 2, verse 1 now says, And he said to me, that is, the Lord said to me, Son of man, stand on your feet, and I will speak with you. Now, look at verse 2. 
Take note of what he said in verse 2. And as he spoke to me, the spirit entered into me and set me on my feet. And I heard him speaking to me. Did you hear that? Did you get the picture? The Lord said to Ezekiel, stand on your feet. And I will speak to you. What did God say? Stand on your feet. The word is what? Stand on your feet. So what entered into him? Stand on your feet. <laughs> did you get it now? God said, stand on your feet. So something entered into him. The spirit, which is the word. Jesus said, the words that I speak, they are what? Spirit. They are life. So when God said, stand. Oh, Holy Spirit. When God says, stand. The stand will enter into you. Did you get it now? When God says, stand. Stand will enter into you. And manifest. The same way as madness enter people, they say, run mad. Mad will enter, and the person will start manifesting mad. When God said, heal, he'll enter you and you will manifest healing. Because the word of God is life, is spirit. Amen. Amen. So, when I speak and I say in the name of Jesus, you are blessed. Blessed, enter you and begin to manifest. Amen. Amen. When I say you are healed, then healing enters you and manifest. Do you get it now? In that area where you need your healing. That is the, that's how God works. His words are spirit and life. Spirit and what? Life. That means his word has the power to animate. And that's why when Peter says, Aeneas, rise up. Make your bed. The Lord Jesus has healed you. Power entered. God. Amen. When Jesus says, you are, when he spoke to the leper, he said, be clean. They are clean. Clean, enter. Clean, manifest. When Jesus says to the dead, wake up, wake up, enter them, they come to life. When Jesus speak to de- do you know Jesus spoke to deaf ears? Deaf ears. He said, hear, they hear. Hearing, enter. Hallelujah. Amen. When he said to the blind, see, see, manifest. Do you get it now? He said, as he spoke, as he spoke to me, the spirit, that is the word, the word is the spirit. Jesus said, the words that I speak, they are what? Spirit. And they are life. Praise our Lord. I remember one day, I was praying with a brother divine. Here. That time we didn't have even friends or anything. And we were here. And I was saying to him, I said, I want to demonstrate the power of God to him that day. We were praying together. Early in the morning. I asked some people to come early in the morning for prayer and only he came. And I wanted to encourage him. So I said, I will demonstrate the power of God to you today. I said, well, I know you will need some money. You're a student. Okay? He said, then, I said, where's your phone? I said, do you have a mobile account? He said, yeah, mobile account. I said, okay, no problem. Where's your phone? He said, yeah. he said it's not with him. He's at home. I said, now, I release money into it. Ask him. He's standing there. Money came. <laughs> that is a word. I said, I release money to your account, not to your mobile account right now. In the name of Jesus. Oh, People send money to him. Ah, it's not a magic thing. God will raise some people, I think members of his family, and they send them money. That hour. And they send the money to him. By the time he got home, the money was there. <laughs> he saw mobile money as entered his mobile money. Are you following me? Yes. That's the word. When the lady came here the other day and she was telling me about uh, uh, grandfather who has stopped sending money for over eight months, the man is in U.S. High here in Ho, and from here in Ho, I just spoke in the name of Jesus. I break the power that been hindering the money. I release the money to you. Ah, huh? the money came. I don't need to travel. I don't even need to see the picture of the man. I don't know what the man, whether he's tall or short. I don't know what he looks like. My own is to speak. When the word is spoken, it is done. The word is spirit, it will manifest. Praise the Lord. So finally, let's look at the book of Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. Look at verse 45. Luke chapter 1, verse 45. 
Luke chapter 1 verse 45. It says, And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. Blessed is she who believed. Hallelujah. Amen. When God speaks and you believe. That is, what does he mean to believe? To agree. To agree with him. To agree with him. To receive his word as the truth. About your situation. About your condition. You don't mind the signs that you are seeing again. You don't mind the symptoms you are seeing again. You don't mind what your eyes see again. You mind the word of God. Amen. Amen. You mind what God says. That's what you mind. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. That's what you mind. You mind the word of God. You mind the word. You don't mind the signs you see. You don't mind the pains you are feeling in your body. No. You mind the word of God and you keep your mind on the word of God. And you keep declaring the word by that I believe that I receive my healing. I believe that I am healed. I believe that I'm blessed. I believe that my provision comes. I believe even though you have not seen it. Blessed is he who has not seen but has believed. Amen. Amen. So faith in the word of God. Faith beyond material thing. Eh, brings you into the realm of blessedness. Tonight, I see you blessed. Amen. I say, I see you blessed. Amen. I say, I see you blessed. Amen. I say, I see you healed. Amen. Tonight, I see you healed. Amen. Every chain, every shackle of darkness is broken in the name of Jesus. Amen. I say, every work of darkness in your life that have been there hiding all these years, I say tonight, they are destroyed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every work of darkness in any part of your body, I say, is destroyed right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Whatever may be the work of darkness, the work of the enemy in your life, in whatever form it has been manifesting, whether it has been from your family, you were born with it or whatever, whether it's generational, whatever it is, the Bible said that man was born crippled from the womb. But I declare by the word of God tonight, that problem, that sickness, that disease, whatever it is, I say, tonight is the end of it in the name of Jesus. Amen. You are healed right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. The power of God creates things. The Bible says all things were made by it. So it creates the bones. It can create bones. It can create flesh. It can recreate things. The word of God can make things. It can recreate. It says by it all things were made. All things were made. All things were made. Where there is no bone, the word of God can create bone. Where there is no wound, uh, womb, the word of God can create womb. A woman came to a man of God and said, Sir, I have no womb. Uh, my womb has been removed. Uh, but the man of God said, Receive your baby. That's the power of the word. And the person received a womb. The baby came. That's the power of God's word. And so tonight again, I say, What the enemy has taken away from you, I give it back to you right now in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Whatever Satan has robbed you of a long time ago or, or recently, whatever Satan has robbed you, I say by the power of the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, that thing is restored to you now in the name of Jesus. Amen. There's divine restoration. Amen. There's divine restoration. Amen. There's divine restoration Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. There's divine restoration Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. I said there's divine restoration Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. The battle you have been fighting for a long time. You have been fighting that battle. You've been fighting. The Bible said they overcame the dragon by the blood of the Lamb and by the word, the word, the word of their testimony. That is, they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the blood of the Lamb is the word of their testimony. They believed in the blood and they testify. They open their mouth and they confess their faith in the blood. And so tonight, by the power of that blood, by the power of that blood, whatever has held you for so long, whatever has held you for so long, I declare tonight by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, whatever has held you for so long, that thing releases you now. The whole, the grip of that thing is broken off in the name of Jesus. Amen. 
Because the blood was the last card in Egypt. It was the last card in Egypt. For which Pharaoh had no response. And so they say, check up. Game over. It was the last card that God played. The last card. For which Pharaoh had no response. And so they told him, check up. Game over. He surrendered. The blood of the lamb. The blood was the final lamb, the final card, the final thing. And it broke every power. Tonight, I, I plead the power that's in the blood of Jesus Christ. Against that power that has been afflicting you. I say, I declare the redemption, the forgiveness, the redemption that's in the blood of Jesus Christ. I plead that redemption. I plead that power in the blood of Jesus against every accusation, against every allegation, against every accusation of the enemy. Die right now, by which they have been tormenting and afflicting you. I plead the righteousness, the justification, the redemption that is in that blood against that voice of darkness, against the accuser, against the power of the enemy in your life. And I declare by that power, the power of the enemy is broken now in the name of Jesus. Amen. You are free. 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 You are healed. You are delivered. In the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever has hindered your progress. You have been sweating. You have been struggling. You are working. It's not that you are a lazy person. You have been hustling. You have been doing all those things. You have, you have done all that you need to do naturally. You have done all that you need to do. But nothing seems to be fruit. No, no fruit. Nothing to show. But right now in the name that is above every name. By the authority of the name of Jesus. And the redemption which is in his blood. I declare that an end has come. Amen. To that thing that has covered you. Amen. From now on. Amen. I lift up the satanic covering. Now in the name of Jesus. Amen. I lift off that satanic covering. In the mighty name of Jesus. Mazolamande remendo robo tulamande. Right now, Ketalune Sulebaha Teriade, Yedilamuro Sute Kariano, Engor du Bahandelia Gazilamando, Regetulaman de Renando Robobo. Tonight, your reign has begun. Amen. Showers of blessing. Amen. You have suffered years of drought. Years of drought. No rain, no rain, no rain. But from tonight, the clouds are full. Yes. The clouds are full. Yes. And they empty themselves upon you. Yes. The, the prophet said there shall be showers of blessing. Yes. The showers are falling on you now. Yes. I said you are receiving a mighty shower of God's favor, of God's provision, of God's favor in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. No more fruitless labor. Amen. No more fruitless other. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The works of your hands are blessed. Amen. By the power of the name of Jesus. Yes. And by the redemption that is in his blood. The victory we have by his blood. I say. The power of the enemy is broken. Amen. And you will rejoice. Amen. This time. This season. All your expectations. Beyond your expectations are granted to you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The package you have been waiting for. Because you have believed, because you believe the word, because you have received it, you believed it. Therefore, receive it now in the name of Jesus. Amen. And whatever has been injuring, whatever has been delaying, is taken out of the way in the name of Jesus. Amen. No more delay. Yes. No more obstruction. Yes. No more delay. Yes. No more obstruction. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Amen. There's divine connection now. Amen. There's divine connection now. Amen. There's divine connection now. Amen. Even those human beings that have misrode, like the wise men, they misrode into the house of Herod. They were looking for the Savior in the, in the, in the house of Herod. They misrode. They will find their way back to you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The package that God assigned and ordained for them to give to you, they will not give it to another person. It's for you. Your name is on it. Yes. As they did not release it to, to Herod, 
but to, to Mary and Joseph to take care of Jesus. They will not, those human beings, those men and women, do not give it to another person. It's for you. Amen. They release it to you. Amen. They release it to you. Amen. And in the name of Jesus, I say, receive it now. Receive it. You will come back with testimony Amen. to the glory of God. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. If there's anyone here who has any point, any point in your body where you are suffering pain, lay hand on it now. As I pray right now, I stretch my hand right now. I cannot touch every one of you, but I stretch my hand right now and I speak out the word. I release the word right now that you are healed in that part of the body. Healing takes place now. Healing takes place now. Creative miracles take place right now. Where there is no bone, there is bone now. Amen. Where there is no flesh, there is flesh now. Amen. Whatever organ is missing there is replaced right now. Amen. I say whatever thing is growing there that is not supposed to grow is cut off right now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Whatever is flowing in your blood that is not supposed to be there. I remove it now. I flush it out now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And whatever is missing. That's supposed to be there that is not there. I release it to you right now. Amen. I speak it forth. I, I say receive it now Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. You are blessed. I'm blessed. I say 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 you are blessed. I'm blessed. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. Give glory to God. Magnify him. Glorify him. Magnify him tonight. Glorify him tonight. Glorify him. Oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven forever. Oh, and ever, oh Lord. Oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven forever. Forever. Oh, and ever, oh Lord. Oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven forever. Oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven forever. Oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Give thanks unto the Lord for what he has done. Give thanks unto him, magnify him for what he has done. Glorify his name, magnify his name for what he has done. Magnify his name.